the solar system, the home of our sun and our eight planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Sorry Pluto, you aren't included in this list, but we will get to why later in the video. Why you may ask? Well, let's take a journey through time and space. Yes, <laughs> space. Anyway, we are going to see how the solar system formed. Well, anyway, focus on that device you are watching this on, because things are about to get interesting. <laughs> Let's just see what this nerd has to say. That isn't nice. Just narrate this. I already got my popcorn, dude. Well, anyway, in the beginning of our little system of planets, there was a little lonely cloud-like figure. This cloud had some certain characteristics that were perfect for making our little solar system. It was made of about 98% hydrogen and helium gas, which is what makes up most of the sun. 1.4% of the hydrogen compounds such as NH3 and CH4, which condense at low temperatures, which is where our gas planets come in. And finally, the remaining 0.6%, which just happens to be rocks and metals. And I'm sure you guessed it. Those form at high temperatures, which explains our first four rocky planets. Anyway, back onto our main topic. What does this cloud-like thing do? And what does it have to do with our planets? I didn't ask. I was just enjoying the commentary. It was rhetorical. Silly! Oh. Yeah. A cloud-like figure is also known as a nebula. Or as we call it for our solar system, the solar nebula. The nebula started to be affected by gravity it began to shrink, and as the nebula began to shrink and spin at a rapid speed, it caused the blob of gas to turn into a disc-like blob of gas. As the particles began to collide with each other, our sun, along with our planets, began to take shape. Well, as you know, or you will find out, that there isn't just any rocky planets like Earth in our solar system. There are two types of planets. No way. Yeah, way. Shh, so I can narrate this, dude. Anyway, the two types are called terrestrial and Jovian. Terrestrial planets are small, rocky planets that happen to be close to the sun. There are four of these types, and they are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Well, what about the other four, some of you may ask? Well, those are large gas-filled planets that are far from the sun. Now, why do we need to know what types of planets there are to know how the solar system formed? Well, it helps explain why the planets are their type of planet and why they are the way they are. Well, basically, gravity begins to form dust into pebbles, pebbles into rocks, rocks into boulders, and then into what we call a planetesimal. This is what began to slam into each other to form a huge rock, which basically explains Pluto. It wasn't big enough to be a planet, so don't cry about it. <coughs> uh, not a tear. No, no, I just had something in my eye. Uh-huh. Anyway, as these planetesimals slam together, they form bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually a planet is the final product. This is basically how the terrestrial planets formed, and it's very similar to how the Jovian formed as well. They were basically icy particles that began to form, eventually into icy planetesimals, which formed the icy slash rocky core of the Jovian planets, and those cores captured gas, which creates the richness of the gas planets. Oh, I got a good question. Ugh, what is it? What happens to the leftovers of all those particles and stuff? Uh, well, those are what we call comets and asteroids. Asteroids mainly are in between Mars and Jupiter, but some follow Jupiter and hang out near Earth. Luckily, they don't hit us that often. Also, we have the Oort Cloud, which surrounds our solar system. That is where all the comets and Pluto hang out, or orbit, as I like to call it. Well, that's it for today's video. Wait, but I want to know more. For another time, my friend. For another time. Okay, bye!